Hello and welcome to Huddersfield Town's preview show ahead of today's Boxing Day match at Barnsley. I hope everyone has had a fantastic Christmas and to help us get into the Christmas spirit a little bit more and also to preview the game, I'm delighted to be joined by Huddersfield Town striker Fraser Campbell and of course Huddersfield Town legend Andy Booth. How are you both? You okay? Yeah, very well Adam, thank you. Cheers. Fantastic. Boothy, you love Christmas, don't you? I do now. Now I've, fi now I've finished. Now I'm ret retired. <laughs> I've, ju I've just broken up from work, so I've got a few, di few days, days holiday. Uh, so, yeah, obviously I can spend it with, with my family. And uh, to be fair, for the last five years when I played, I love Christmas because I always seem to pick up injuries as well. Just little niggles, <laughs> just to get me, get me, on, get me away for te 10 days. So I've had some good Christmases o over the years, but... Which are early days, I've got to admit, it, it was hard work, yeah. And I feel sorry for, that, for these lads now that have played so many games over the last couple, two or three months and still to have a run of games they've got in front of them. It's going to be difficult, but they're all fit lads, so I'm sure that they'll be fine. What's it like, Fraser, for you, Christmas? Uh, well, like we said, we've got a lot of games. Um, we were in hotels. Last couple of months, anyway, been in hotels every every three, two, three days. So it's been, you know, traveling here, there, and everywhere. But I'm I'm, I'm used to it now, um, especially over Christmas time. Um, you know, you're always if you get lucky and you're you're at home, it's it's not too bad. But if you're away, you know, you got the training day at Christmas, then you're off uh, to a hotel. So it's it's a bit difficult, you know, especially with my my kids getting a bit older. But um, you know, they, they're wanting me to hang around a bit longer, but it's, you know, it's just part of the job. Um, but yeah, we're still going to have a good, good Christmas. Um, I'll have a, a lot of fun during the morning, but then I'll be off afternoon time to, to play football. Proper early mornings for you as well, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll be up, crack a dawn, no doubt, um, opening presents. Yeah, I'll probably be building some of that's in thirty thousand pieces. But you know, it's it's part of part of it, and it's you know, it's it's nice to have something, especially this year, to have something to to look forward to as a family. Hey, Fraser, enjoy it because it don't like it don't last forever. My kids now have told me I can wake them up at eleven o'clock and no earlier. So enjoy <laughs> mornings because they don't last forever. And I'd love to be able to get up with my kids now and open the presents with them. But now. I'll be twiddling my, twiddling my thumbs to wait for him to get up. So, so enjoy it. Enjoy these times because you won't get them back again. Nah, yeah, it, you, you're right. Um, it's, it is early, but it's, it's, it's all worth it. You know, the excitement that's buzzing through the house and that. So, it's, yeah, it's, it'd be great. You should come round if you want. Open some presents early doors here. <laughs> well, I've got no to do. I've got no to do for three hours. So, I'll, I'll knock it on your door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boody, like we like you said, you you're glad you're out of the game uh, now in terms of in being able to enjoy Christmas properly. What what was it like um, in your era? Were you allowed to go kind of fully out on on Christmas dinner, turkey, all the trimmings, a few pints? No, you, no, you, you won't. No, no, you, they'd, obviously like Christmas Eve we'd have a, just a, a light training session, and then depending which manager you, you had, more, most managers I had. They, they like to, to get in. So say nine o'clock training on Christmas Day, a uh, couple of hours, go through your set pieces, your routine, your plan of play and all that, and then get, get us away. So so a lot of managers like to, to be back home for 12, half 12 for, for a Christmas dinner. And you just you were sensible. You were you didn't go ri ridiculous. You might have had a couple of glasses of wine with, with, your, with your dinner, but you, you, you still had a, had a game. So... But then, but all the other managers, like Fraser says, you know, tells, and there was some that that had ask you to train, go in for two o'clock, train for a couple of hours, then go to hotels, even if you were at home or, or away. So it just depends which manager manager you had. Uh, and back then, we, we, with me, uh, when we when we played, there was a game on Boxing Day and then a game on the twenty seventh as well. So we had two games in two days, which is absolutely ridiculous because you just can't recover in time. It's hard enough, but. For these lads now, when they've got three days to, to recover, and still you're not properly recovered, then we had so we and, and you look at the science back then, we were told, right, get on, lads, make yourself a cup of coffee, cup of tea, and lie in hot bath for three hours. And, and, that, and, that's, and that's what we did. And you, obviously, now it's ice baths and 
the right drinks, the right fluids, the right, the, the, the right food to, to, to eat. So, but back then, everybody was exactly the same. We were all in bath for three hours. So we, we were all next day so, so stiff. Uh, and, and it always seemed that 27th game just didn't seem to really, nothing seemed to happen. I can't remember a game where it, it might have been a 1-0 or 0-0 or 1-1. I, I can you imagine. scored. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which game was that? Because I can't remember that. <laughs> one nil at home to Rotherham. You scored the winner. Oh, I didn't like to mention that, but that was one of my best goals I've ever scored, actually. <laughs> like we've, it's like we've set it up, Adam, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that would have... Yeah, that would have... I didn't score many goals outside the box, but it would have for me... I'll talk you through it, because you won't, won't believe... It's on, it's on my DVD, if anybody wants to get me DVD, if it's still in circulation. Uh, uh, Chris Billy crossed it. Paul Reed edited it back to me. 25 yards, volley, top corner. And it did absolute fly. It's one of them. I've never caught a ball like it before. And I never did afterwards. But it just it just flew, flew in. And it went against Matt Clark, who Matt Clark were playing for Rotherham in goal. And in 1996, when I signed for Sheffield Wednesday, me and Matt Clark signed, signed the very same day. So I've got to admit, I reminded him a bit on, of that goal. But... I'm glad you reminded me because I'd forgotten that was about that was around Christmas. I shouldn't forget goals like that. <laughs> how how was that playing the 26th and, and the 27th? I can imagine when the fixtures came out, you were like, "Surely that's not right," or "That's got to change." And then when it actually comes around, I can imagine even like you sat there on Christmas Day thinking, "What have I got myself in for?" Oh, you, but you knew it was coming. You knew it were, were coming, and and back then as well, there were squads of 14 lads. 15 lads, there were three subs and, and that's it. So you knew if you played on the, on the 26th, unless you got injured or you had an absolute horrendous game, you were playing next day as well. There were no, there were no rotations. Uh, so, it, yeah, it, the 26th, went, I can remember, as I said, when you laid in that bath and thinking, my God, we've got to do it all again tomorrow. Your legs are aching and that. And, and it's more psycho, psychological. You're thinking you're tired because... You've just had 90 minutes of a, a tough game. And it, and it did, like I said, it, it spoiled the Christmas period because you still, probably psychologically as well, you kept a little bit back on the 26th, still for 27th, uh, just so you had some left in, left in the tank. So they were great games, uh, which, which was stupid, but it just, it was common sense. I know it's still now with Fraser, with a, with a, uh, with a timetable they've got over Christmas, but at least it's a little bit more sensible than playing two games in two days. When you score that many goals, Booney, I think we'll let you off for getting that one as well. It'll be all right. Cheers, Adam. Thank you. <laughs> Fraser, can you imagine what it'd be like playing two games in, in two days? The amount of running that, that you put into one, I can't imagine you having any legs left after two games in two days. I don't think I could possibly do it. I feel sick thinking about it now. <laughs> the amount of Christmas dinner I'm having and then to play on Boxing Day and then play again the 27th, no chance. And then probably play again New Year's Day. Yeah, we played. So, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, no. New Year's Eve it was. Is that what we New Year's Eve? Like, yeah, yeah. But at least there were two, there were always two up front. With, with yeah, the, well, yeah. We only had to do half the running that you do first. So, <laughs> so I, did, I did your running in two games where you just do it in one game. So, so that does help. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned Christmas dinner there, Fraser. Are you, what, how do you work on, on Christmas Day? Is it a, a case of just having a little bit of dinner? Like, how, are, how are the nutrition, nutritionists at the club with you as well? Uh, well, we've got a nutritionist in this year, haven't we? And he's, he's been happy with the way I'm, I'm going. So this year, I'm having everything. If I fancy <laughs> extra help in turkey, I'm, I'm having that. I don't have to, I very rarely have turkey throughout the year. And I definitely don't have any cranberry sauce of it. So Christmas time is my one time that I just drown the whole plate in gravy and, and cranberry sauce. And I'm not getting excited thinking about it. I'm sat at the dinner table now. So am I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot wait. I'm gonna two foot it. <laughs> you a fan of the cranberry sauce, Booty? Everything, yeah, yeah. Sprouts, you you name it. Sweet turnip, Yorkshire puddings, turkey, pigs in blankets. I'm about. I'm looking. My mum makes about five or six different kinds of stuffing. 
I have all them as well. So, it, oh, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I can do it. I can do it now. I don't. I, I don't have to play on the twenty six. So, just say, Cranbish, you've got a lot of running up at Barnsley. <laughs> I'll have, an, I'll have a nice electrolyte drink as well, just to wash ah, it down. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Heavily nice. loved. <laughs> <laughs> On, uh, Boothie, obviously, you, you've been around the game for a number of years. Have you had any stories of players that have come in uh, on Boxing Day after a massive Christmas dinner, too many pints the night before, and, and really struggled on, on, on Boxing Day? No, not, not really, no. No. Like, like I said, but we knew we had two games, so we didn't. We were quite sensible. You won't, you won't think so. What some of the players we had went, but we were. We knew you, you couldn't really go mad on, on Christmas Day, so we, we enjoyed it. But Boxing Day came, Christmas Day, and then especially under Neil Warnock, well, what he used to do, what we'd have obviously play twenty sixth and then twenty seventh, and if we were playing at home on the twenty seventh, Neil would have a, a big party at his house. So he lived in on Firth, so it'd be all the players, the wives, the girl, girlfriends. And so we'd come straight after the game on the 27th, straight up to, to, to Neil's house. And I can remember the first time we, we went, lovely house, as you, as you can, can imagine. And we went in and every single thing were cling filmed. You couldn't, it took tables, chairs, utensils, everything. It just wouldn't let us touch anything. There were signs, bully. Bullet, do not go into this room. Ronnie, do not enter. And, and it, it were like, what do we do? What, what? So we're all like this, just having us drinks, not there, there moving. We, were only, we could only use one toilet as well, even though he had about four or five in, in his house. But what a great night we used to have. It. We're like, right, lads, you've had two, two hard days, uh, and now let's just, let's just enjoy it. So even though, like you said, we had games on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, it's still on the 27th, or if we're away, it, it arranged on the 28th. And, and, that, and that's the team spirit Neil always got from his, his players. It, we used to train hard, work hard, but we played hard. He always, and, but he always looked after you. And, that, and it, like, like a lot of managers, they bring in the, the wives and the girlfriends as well, because that's important. So we don't, just, like Fred says, he's been in hotels for the last two or three months, so he never gets a chance to see his uh, his wife, his, his family. So obviously that night's just for, for the wives and girlfriends, but then he'd have kids' days days as well. But we'd, oh, what a night we'd have after the two two games. Win, lose or draw, it, it didn't matter. It's those kind of things, isn't it, Fraser, that brings teams together. Obviously this year with COVID, I, I can imagine that, that we haven't been able to, to do that kind of thing. Whereas in previous years, Again, go, going out with your teammates, uh, the wives, the girlfriends, bringing the families all together can make, make a massive difference, not only for you guys on the pitch, but again, also for your families. Yeah, um, I've, I've always said the Christmas do, usually obviously in December time, that you have always, you know, brings everyone that little bit closer. You know, you don't often see, like we've not had time to see anyone outside of football um, this season. So that's usually where you get a chance to see, you know, what your mates are like or your teammates are like when a couple had a couple of drinks, when they're happy, when they're in the normal gear. Do you know what I mean? So it's always, I always find that that brings in, you know, that, you know, team spirit um, makes it a bit tougher, a bit uh, more together. But, you know, like we've not been able to do it. But as soon as we can, I think um, we, we'll definitely organise something. I think I think it's important that, um, you know, to play well as a team, You've, it's, it's probably best if you your mates off and on the on the field. So it's um, like we've been in hotels last. We've been together a lot, you know, last two couple of months. But you know, it's it's not the same as you know being sat around a table or if restaurant or whatever, just letting your hair down and getting to know your teammates just that little bit better. Well, when you can't have that, do you have to do anything different? Like you're a massive character in the dressing room. Do do you kind of? Do anything to kind of bring people together, bring clicks in the dressing room together. Um, you, you try, but you know it's 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 hard. Just you know, like for me, I, like I said, I can I get on with everyone, so I'm always having a laugh and a joke with you know the players, the staff, you know the canteen members, everyone. So you know, it's, it's, you've got to have people that bring everyone together uh, because if you start getting the little groups and that, it can come a bit you know, a bit toxic, but, you know, the best teams that I've been involved in, there's been a 
a big a core of, of players that have all been good mates uh, on and off the field, and you know that's you know that's what we're trying to to do here, um, as not just on the pitch but off the pitch, trying to be you know well, um, but get on well, so it, you know helps you to win games of football. I think there's nothing better for us either, is there? You get everybody around the table in, in a bar, 15, 20 lads, all up. I don't know, you don't drink pints now, but that's what we, we used to be. Just having a drink and just having a laugh and, and, and talking to each other. And that's how you properly get to know, to know each other. And, and I remember, I'll go back to Neil Warnick. He, he, we had a great team spirit. But like first said, we had a great team spirit on and off the, on and off the field. Uh, and he'd, he'd arrange days where... It'd say, right, lads, you're at the training training ground at nine o'clock. Bring your golf clubs. Bring your bring bring your, bring your clothes to go out out in. And uh, so you so you'd be there. And some of the lads have said, well, it's a day off, gaff. I'm going shopping with with, with my wife. Or, and uh, said, no, this is a tra- this is a training day. And he'd get us on the coach, and we'd go for a round of golf, and then we'd get we'd uh, we'd, we'd have a few drinks afterwards. And, it's, and it, even the lads who didn't play golf drove the buggies or just walked, walked around with you. And it is that, that team spirit. And then one day, he said, right, you're stopping over. I think it was all to all. And uh, he, he, uh, we had a game of golf and it went uh, early, about nine o'clock. So we, we were in bar for two, two-ish. And he says, right, I've got a coach coming for you at six. So we'd been in the bar from, from two till six and we'd, we'd, we'd had quite, quite a few. Uh, and then we're gone, coach. And we were still having a few on coach. We didn't know where we were going, so we went to Sheffield. He took it to Sheffield. And by this time, there were seven or eight of us that we'd, we'd had probably too much to drink. So we thought, right, we're not going. We're not, we're not going. We'd organised a bar. We'd organised nightclub for us. We said, no, nah, just take us back to, back to his hotel. We'll stay, we'll stay and, have, and, and sober up. Uh, so, so we did that thinking we're doing a sensible thing. And... Uh, Next morning, obviously, we all went. And then the day after, in training, us eight got called to Warnock's office. And he gave us a right rollicking. And he, and he fined us because we, were, we, we left the team. He said, it's, it was a team outing. It was team spirit. You should have been in that, them bars. You should have been in them nightclubs. And, and we got a right rollicking because we were thinking we're doing the right thing. And he, and he, he was that big on uh, team morale and togetherness. And he says, you don't do that if you, if you leave your mates out, out, outside on a, on a night, then you'll, you won't be there on a, on a match day. That's what he believed. He believed everybody stick together. And uh, so for eight people thinking, doing the right thing, we were, we got, i say, right, well, like, but, but that's like you said, but just, just team spirit, innit, and getting the lads together. And you can now say, I, I don't know, Carlos, I've not, I've not met him, but it looks to be really bringing all the squad in together. And it, it really is working well. Yeah, absolutely. Fraser, have you had any kind of experiences like that where, where managers have, have pulled you in for not doing, uh, going on a team outing or for some of the lads missing out on things? Uh, not me personally, because any team outing, I'm there. <laughs> I'm the first. <laughs> <laughs> he he wouldn't come home on that coach. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, but I think I've had it when in my younger years where I can't remember which manager it was. When I was, uh, I think it was in the youth team at uh, Man United. One of the, we had a we had a tournament away. It was end of the season. You know, we've won um, youth tournaments here, there, and everywhere. And come to the end of the year, we're, we're I think it was Hong Kong sevens or something like that. And was round a pool because we just got beat in the semis or something like that. Round the pool, and a few of us had like beers and that. And the manager came over and everyone was like, "Oh no, hit the beers right, right." Anzo, who's not got a beer. So a few of the lads put their hands up and said, right, you lot, fines, get them shots and get them a couple of beers, you know, catch up with the rest <laughs> of us. Because it'd been a long season and, you know, there's, there's, there's right times to let your hair down. And, um, you know, that was one of the times yeah. that he was wanting us to, to spend some time together and have, you know, relax and have a laugh and a job. Yeah, absolutely. And talking about bringing people together, Boody, um, every year the, the club, uh, goes out and gives gifts to to local hospitals. Talk us about how the how the club has, has done that this year. Obviously, with with COVID. Yeah, obviously it's been it's been different, hasn't it? Because every every year the players always go to the HRA, Huddersfield Royal Infirmary, and, and call the Dale, and 
they all go, all the squad, every single player goes uh, and takes goodie bags to, to, to the, the children that are unfortunately in the wards. Uh, but obviously this year with the COVID-19, they've not been a- able to, but the club was, was brilliant. They give a great, uh, still brought the goodie bags uh, and, and I took them up, up uh, to the Calderdale Hospital. Unfortunately, I couldn't go into, into the ward, but I just dropped them off in reception and, and the, there were about 100 goodie bags for all the kids to be split between uh, Huddersfield and, and, Cal- and Calderdale. And a few of the lads, four or five of the lads then sent messages, recorded messages to some of the Huddersfield fans that were, that were, were in the hospital. Uh, so via Zoom, they could uh, relay their, their messages and obviously send them all their, their Christmas wishes and best wishes and hopefully uh, get well soon. So we've still been able, able to do it, but not the exact same as, as yeah. we've done, have done it in the past. And then I don't know if Fraser wants to carry on. I don't know. Just like you said, um, use, it's something that I've been used to doing um, throughout the years from a football career. And obviously, with what's been going on, I've not had a chance to go up there and you know give the presence. And not just, it's not just the presence; it's you know being there as well. Um, I think it cheers up a lot of people kids especially that are in um, difficult situations at this especially at this time of year and um, with with me having kids myself I just wanted to do something um, a little bit extra so I um, spoke to you Dan Adam and yeah you got me the uh, they got a link um, a link for the hospital where it's like connected to Amazon and uh, it's a big like a wish list kind of thing and you can just click and um, add send uh, the hospital uh, the children or whoever um, the things from the wish list so yeah that's what I've done um, a few days ago now so hopefully they'll get the stuff before Christmas um, you know it's, it's it's only a gift but you know hopefully it makes them feel that little bit better at, 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 in the difficult time it's absolutely fantastic to be fair that booty isn't it like everyone knows that, that Fraser's a local lad but like yourself, Huddersfield, born and bred, it, it means a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, yeah. yeah. And for and first, right, you should see the players. They're, they're absolutely brilliant. When they go into the wards, and you should see the smiles on, on, on the kids' faces when, when the players walk in. And, and not just the, the kids, the mums and dads as well, who are, who are big supporters, and see their heroes walking in. And, and you can't... A lot of players, they get a lot of stick up, but when, when they do a hospital visit, they, they do they do absolute brilliant, brilliant when they talk they give the ta- time up and and Fraser's has been a bit modest to what he said then he like obviously the goodie bags it is is like a gift from the football club Fraser came came to you Adam didn't he and he asked what what he could he could do to help help the kids uh, so it's massive credit to to, to Fraser that for, for for doing what such a kind gesture uh, and and what makes it different this year because. I think because of the COVID nineteen, a lot of the the, the hospitals they, they weren't allowed to. They get a lot of donations from a, a lot of a, a lot of areas. But this year, because, because of the situation, they weren't they weren't going to be able to get any any presents at all. So we we face this generosity now. The kids that are in the the wards on on Christmas Day will be getting a lot of presents. So you can't you can't well on behalf of of the football club and. The both hospitals. What Fraser has done is a fantastic gesture, and we should a, a massive thank you from from everybody. Fraser, it's a great, it's a fantastic gesture what you did. Sorry, <laughs> I know it's hard talking. I know you don't. You, do, you didn't do it for that reason, but it's you, you deserve all the credit you get. He won't have to work Zoom. He won't have a clue how to work. <laughs> cool. So are you ready to carry on? Yeah. Yeah. Cracking, man. Cool. So, obviously, the, this game is on Boxing Day as well. The Christmas period always has a special feel about it, doesn't it, Fraser? Do you do you like playing on on Boxing Day? And, and what's that like when you you walk out and fans are singing different chants? They're like more Christmassy chants. Obviously, they're not allowed to do that because there's no fans in at the minute. But just just the general feel around this period. 
yeah, it's definitely more festive. You know, you might see the odd Santa in the in the stands and stuff like that. But I think everyone's um, a bit more merry. They've a bit of time off work. They've spent time with their loved ones, and you know they're all more relaxed. And they've come out on Boxing Day um, to you know to support the club and, and enjoy themselves. It's my dad's birthday as well, Boxing Day, so it's it's always that a um, little bit more special for me personally. But it's um, yeah, I think we'll miss them uh, this this time, obviously. Um, yeah. with what's going on but you know it's that's life but hopefully they, they can they'll have sent the, the Christmas cheer um, <laughs> through the airwaves or whatever whatever way they can yeah, he can score a goal for him as well I'm sure that'll put a smile on his face <laughs> yeah it is yeah exactly <laughs> not asking for impossible things so I might as well try <laughs> <laughs> Boozy do you do you or did you always like Boxing Day matches? Other than when you had two games in two days, obviously. Yeah, yeah, because they weren't they were always that good, good atmosphere, that festive, festive atmosphere, and and you you could you could feel it in the, in in the crowds. Uh, so it it were, it was always nice to to play. I, I always look for. I didn't enjoy the twenty seventh one, but I always look forward to to the Boxing Day one because, like Bear says, the the crowd there was there's. They all had Santa outfits on. They, were, they used to have fancy dress on, and and they'd be singing Christmas carols and and that. And it and it it it, it was nice, and 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 it was always a big crowd as well. Everybody used to turn up for the Boxing Day one, so you you could guarantee a lot a lot bigger crowd, and and that's what you like to play in. So it was a great atmosphere, and and I've got to admit, I, I was trying to think of what were what were the best games I played on Boxing Day, and and, and they were all down. They were all. But I can't, I, can, I can't remember one great game. I can, I can remember playing, <laughs> we beat Stoke 1-0 and it was the worst game I've ever played in. But the goalkeeper was uh, Prudhoe uh, in goal for Stoke. He, he played a long time for, for Stoke. And it were nil-nil all over it. I'd written all over it, nil-nil. And after about 82 minutes, he got a back pass. And it was, it was the time where, I think it was a year after, he could pick it up. So he had to kick it out. And back then, goalkeepers couldn't use the feet at all. And he took the biggest bob up, went over his foot, and it went in, it went in. And that, and, and we, we won one nil. And that's all I could, from my boxing day experiences, that's the only game I could <laughs> excited happening. You must have had some better ones, Fraser, hopefully. Um... I can't. I think the ones I've always done well in uh, are ones where we've had Christmas Day off. I think when I was at Hull, uh, like ten years ago, or whatever, we had Christmas Day completely off. So you know, we came back in on Boxing Day. Everyone was happy that they've had the day off, and we think we played um, Wolves, uh, Wolves on Boxing Day, and we, and we I beat them two 0 so, and I think I scored as well. So it was, um, yeah, I think that's the one that sticks out in my mind. But usually, you know, it's. it's but like you said, it's a bit flat the games because it's you know people probably want to be at home, you know, rather than <laughs> running around carrying an extra bit away. It's a bit more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Full of turkey. Yeah, that sounds like Fraser's like trying to get a day off on Christmas Day, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's, if it works, I mean, that's when I'm, like that. okay. I'm always I always play the best when I have a day off. <laughs> <laughs> so no greater than. <laughs> <laughs> really can you imagine doing the amount of phrase uh, running that Fraser does in a match no not a chance no, it's I'd love to know how far he how far he covers because he never whistle to, to the last he, he, ne he never stops moving and it and sometimes it must be so so destroying for him because sometimes he get the support and and he seems to create chances for other people where and then Unfortunately, the chances don't always come come for Fraser because he's he's out on the right wing, out on the left wing, he's in midfield trying to battle with centre half. So it, it's a it's an un, it really is an unselfish job he's doing, but it works for the team. And and when Fraser's is not there, you can tell there's a massive hole. So it's an important job. It's an unselfish job. And and thank God I didn't have to do with that because I still wanted three. Or four to come and put put on my head if I were doing the work phase again. And sometimes you don't get any. So my God, my come taken off to you, Fraser, for doing the work you do because it, it, there's unselfishness and then there's unselfishness and that it, it's unbelievable the work that you you get through on a match. But but sometimes 
no nothing back. And, and you, sometimes, there's no chances sometimes for you, but you keep on running. So, and I say, we know tissue when, when you're not there, when you're not in the, the t- if you pick up an injury or you get messed in, you can definitely notice that when, you, when you're not playing, there's a massive hole and you, 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 you sh- you're sorely missed. And I'm not saying that because you sat here, but. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> How do you keep yourself going, Fraser, when like things don't go for you or chances don't fall to you? How do you keep yourself motivated to do those unselfish runs, the dirty runs that you have to do to try and, I guess, create space for, for other teammates, but also to, to defend from the front? Uh, I think it's just my... my, my um, I, I hate losing. You know, I want to always do better. and I'm, I, I always want to win. It's my competitiveness that keeps me... Um, making them runs whether it's like I said for myself or, or for somebody else for me the, the when I step on that pitch I want to walk off as a winner not not scored four but lost by four um, which you know some certain strikers are like that um, <laughs> but, I'm not uh, saying yeah, anything me, so. but <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd be happy if we lost by four and I scored all four and I've got that meter I wouldn't come off <laughs> <laughs> But for me, yeah, it's it's more of a team thing, you know, being part of, of, of something good rather than, you know, being doing well for myself personally. Um, yeah, and I've always been like that. I just want to do well for for the team. Yeah, and, and Barnsley obviously uh, are our opponents. They're one place below us in the table. Same points, same goal difference. A team with loads of energy, high pressing. Should be a good test for you, that phrase. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, every time we, we look at his opposition, we look and think, well, you know, maybe we'll get an easy one next week or you know next week. But it's it's just relentless. Like we're not, there's not one team in the league where you look and think, you know, we'll, we'll beat them. You know, that every team is is good at something. Uh, you know, the way they play, they're all they're all played pretty well. So it's it's going to be another tough one. You know, we played um, Coventry last week and. You know, you think team that just come up should be an easy win, but I think that was physically one of the hardest games that I've had this year. You know, they were they're all over the place. So it's you know, Barnsley play in a similar kind of way. So it's going to be another um, a test for us. But you know, we, that's that's what it's about: testing yourself and uh, and pushing yourself to that to that uh, to the limit to to try and improve and, and try and get some some more points you know, away at Barnsley. Nice Yorkshire derby as well, Boozy, on Boxing Day. It can't get much better than that. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. And and it's just a bit of fans out there, aren't it? Because yeah, we talked about the atmosphere before on Boxing Day. It'd be absolute bouncing it. At uh, obviously, I just feel we'd always take as, as full quarter. So they'd have had all back, of the, back behind the goal, all, all obviously support, supporting the, the lads. So it's disappointing that there's no fans there. But... It's it's a cracking game. Barnes are, do, are doing well as well. It'll be, it'll, it'll be a tough game, but on our on our form, there's no reason why we can't go there and and take away three points and have a good start to the crest, uh, festive period. I'm interested, Fraser, because we we speak a lot about um, your unselfish nature on the pitch. When the team get a clean sheet, how pleased does that make you? Because like you said, you're not one of those strikers to, to walk off the pitch and when we've lost and be like, oh, it's all right, I scored today. If, if we concede a goal, are you actively kind of upset because of that? Well, yeah, definitely because I know uh, in this team we, we, we can score goals, whether it be one, two or three goals, we, 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 we've got the ability to do that. So if I know my if I can count on, you know, especially the back line and the goalkeeper to keep a clean sheet, I know that we're going to get, at the very least, a point from the game. So it's, um, you know, when you concede, you, you are a bit upset, uh, annoyed or whatever. But uh, at the same time, I'm, I'm always confident that we can, we can get something still out of the game because, you know, I trust in my teammates and we've, 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 we've had a pretty decent season so far. And, you know, we're, we're getting better, it would seem. I'm sure you agree with that, Boo. In terms of the season, game on game, we seem to have made some kind of improvement, whether that be defensively or the movement going forwards. There, there seems to be that development, and the, the transition it keeps making further steps. Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah. Every, every game, yeah, we 
we've, we've had a setbacks, but you, you can tell from where we're beginning of the season, the strides they've taken. It's, it's, it's brilliant to watch. Like, I, I've not been able to go to any games, so it's, you, never, you can never really tell how, how the game's going when, when, you, when you're watching it on a, on a laptop or, or on your, on your te- television. But they're entertaining. The, the games are enjoyable to watch because we're creating chances, we're playing fast football, we're passing the ball quickly. We've, we've got pace and, and we're, scoring, we're scoring goals. And we, yeah, we do. We are conceding a, a few as well. But if you're playing that kind of football, you're gonna, you're gonna, it's gonna happen. Uh, so I've thoroughly enjoyed it, and I, I look forward to to watch it, watching the games. Where last year and, and a couple of years, it, 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 it was it was quite difficult to to watch. But this style of football, it really is entertaining, and and, and it is it's, it's just. It's just so so quick, and it must be difficult to, to play in. Like we said, the word phrase does, but for everybody, they all they all must be so fit now because it's not easy to play at that speed for for, for 90, 90 minutes, especially when you you're playing out right from the the back, and there's there's no there's no time where keepers kicking it where you can have a few few seconds breather. It's straight away the ball's down and they're off again playing. So, but it is enjoyable, and it really is. As I said, good to watch, and and in the new year, everybody's got to be positive. And if we can get some fans back as well, because it must be a nightmare for the players to have nobody there. And it's I can remember what it was like when you were just had training games or played in the reserves. It would it would horrendous. So so for the players now to not have anybody, and then hopefully in the new year, whatever it is, we can get the fans back. That must be a, it'll get be a massive lift for the players as well. So if, if we're roughly where we are now, there's no reason why we can't have a run and. And you never know where we can end up in the, in, the, in, in the end of the season. Yeah, absolutely. I think you hit the nail on the head there, Boothy. And uh, just before we wrap this up, uh, Darren Bullock. Uh, ah, Boothy. Oh, How my are you, God. Buddy? But, Monk, oh, I'm sorry, boy. boy um, <laughs> my internet's been down, so. How are you, Boothy? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you, buddy. Are you? How are you, Fraser? All right, pal. You keep scoring some goals and keep us up, mate. Yeah, you're good, mate. um, Talking about about... Christmas dinners, he looks like Christmas dinner. Oh, oh, Booby, me and you and end up falling out, you know that? You're right, Bully. I'm I'm safe here, aren't I? Yeah, you're safe behind the camera. You're right there. Yeah, we had some um, some good times, didn't we? No, we did, Bully. We really did. We had some good good laughs, didn't we? Yeah, very good, mate. Very good. Ben and them, <laughs> Malaga. What, what were you like, uh, Bully, on, on Christmas Day? Well, to be honest with you, like, um, uh, obviously, some of the boys just knocked on it. It's it's totally different now. Um, obviously, there's the, the, there's the dietitians and all this sort of thing. You had myself, you had Ronnie Jepson. Ronnie Jepson used to smoke, drink, Pat Scully, all the same, and, and, and stuff like that. And... For me, um, when I when I play with Neil and obviously with Boovy and Jeppo and all that, um, I had to um, seriously I had to have a drink on a Friday night so I could sleep for the Saturday because I, I was like like I said I was like bubbling up and whatever. If I didn't have a beer on a Friday night, I I couldn't sleep and I was I was absolutely a nightmare for it. But I can remember the one game um, Neil I, I I lived in Goldcar first. And then I moved from Golko down t- into Elmfirth, where Neil was, obviously, for him to keep a closer eye on me. Um, <laughs> yeah, obviously. Um, and I got, like, I went in on a, on the Saturday, and, it, and he called me into the office before the game. Um, Bully, um, I've had some phone calls saying you was in Elmfirth last night in the pubs having a few beers, which I was. And I said, yeah, I'm not going to lie to you, I was. Don't you do that, don't you do this, don't you do I played on the Saturday, on the, on the day. But he said, don't do this, don't do that. So I said, OK. The following week, I always remember, the following week we played, I think it might have been Leicester or somebody at home. Um, and I didn't go out on the Friday. And he rung me up. He kept ringing me up every hour from about six o'clock to about half past nine. He kept ringing me up. I was like, well, you, you know, and he, bully, if you don't answer, I'm going to find you a week's wages. I was like, oh. So I had to be, and I played on the Saturday and I was absolutely, it's probably the worst game I ever played for, for the town. And that's the truth. And he come, he pulled me in the he pulled me in the dressing room after the game, and he said, "You go out on a Friday." And that's the truth. 
And I had to, I, and that, I swear that is, and he used to say to me, so, so he said, but do not go into the town centre because I'm getting phone calls. He said, go into home firm. And I said, all I want is about three or four points, just just so I can, you know what I mean? Chill out. And that's exactly what I used to do. And, and, and like you said, you've obviously gone on, you've obviously spoken a bit the last couple of hours, well, the last hour or so. I always remember the one thing, and I'll probably Boovy you back me up on this. We um we had a game, we had about four or five games in a period of from Christmas to New Year. We had we had, and I think Boovy scored an absolute worldie of volley or something. If I remember, we, right. we, we talked about day. that. We talked yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah, he forgot yeah. about and I remember, that. Guy. I remember, I remember. I forgot. <laughs> no, I don't, mate. And I remember, and I can remember, and I thought it was it was New Year's Eve, and there was about three foot of snow on. It rained us field done on the ground. And I thought, game's <laughs> off. I went into town got, on New Year's Eve, got absolutely ruined. And I mean smashed that in the head, ruined. And and I was and I was fit to play the next day. And I woke up on the New Year's Day morning. I looked outside and it must have rained all night. And there was no snow anywhere. And the game was on. I was like, oh, I couldn't even see straight. <laughs> That's the truth. I was yeah. like, oh, and I, I went into the I went to the game. And Dave Wilson, God rest his soul, I said, William, you're gonna have to give me a give me a massage or something and whatnot. I said, I'm I'm all over the place. I was falling asleep on the on the treatment bed, on the treatment table, and he's waking me up, bully, stay away from the gaffer. You stinks of beer. <laughs> that's the truth, that is. Honest, honest. That For and sure, that's what yeah, it used to that's yeah. what it used to be like. I used to be like that. I was a character, but I had to I like people do different things to get them. To get them up for the game, I had to have a beer on a Friday night, or say say on a, a Tuesday night game. I had to, if I, I couldn't sleep on a Monday, I had to have a beer on a Monday night. And that was the truth. I, in, in 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 the end, um, the gaffer Neil knew what I was about, and that was the truth. Did you have it on the pitch, like Ollie, didn't you? Oh, sorry, really. Sorry, I was just saying he did it on the pitch, though. It and that yeah. all, all them stories are true, and probably worse. He didn't have three or four packs. I'll tell you that every Friday. <laughs> No, 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 I'm trying to be nice right. now. It was probably about it was probably about two barrels. <laughs> but now I've got them in me. I've got them inside here now, Booby. Look. <laughs> but no, and it, it was. And, and to be honest with you, that that was what I had to do. But come match day, and as soon as my foot stepped across that white line, Booby, no. I yeah. was, I was the bang. That was me, and I was the. I'll take it. I'll take you to any levels. You come with me, and I'll take you to any levels. And that was what I was about. I wasn't. I wasn't blessed with natural ability, which you know, somebody are. I had a talent for getting the ball and and ruffling some feathers. And that was that was, and it, it suited our way of playing. And that was great. Yeah. To fair, Bolly, I'd rather you've been than opposition anyway. Yeah, that was, yeah, uh... of course, of course, yeah, of course, movie. And at the end of the day. Like, like we say, you, times have moved on and times have moved forward and, and God knows what, but I, I, it was an absolute, like you say, and probably some of the lads now, it was an absolute pleasure playing for town. It still is now. It's still, you know, like, I, like I've said previous, I, as soon as my, my own fault, and you knew what the score was at the time when I left the town, as soon as I left town, it became a job to me then. And I, I just didn't like it. I... I'll, I'll replay for the town for nothing, and I still would now. If I if I could run, I'll put a shirt on and I'll play, and I'll guarantee I'll scare a few people. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't last long though, but hey, I'll take Bruby, the referee with you, me. Can you imagine Bully and Hoggy in the middle of midfield? Oh, <laughs> to be honest with you, Hoggy, no disrespect for Hoggy, Hoggy's like a little um, a little butterfly towards me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'd have said, come and follow me. I'd have, I'd have been on the rope with me and I'd have landed him. No, no, no. no. <laughs> but I'm just saying, at the end of the day, like, Oggy knows how to, obviously, Oggy knows how to play the game. Now, to it was different when we had to play. You know, you know, you see the game the other night, um, when, was it um, Sheffield United? And the lads won a fantastic challenge. And, and, they've, and, and they've sent him off. And I'm thinking, to, hold on a minute. How do you expect to tackle? Hey, if you're tackling, you can't just stand still. You've got to, your momentum takes you through the ball. And, and I thought, well, he's won the ball. And, and the referee sent him off cause he, because he kicked him after. What? Man, I'll have lasted one, not, not even one minute. I'll have lasted 10 seconds. And I took the referee with me as well. <laughs> and he's not joking. Now, and that's the truth. No, no. <laughs> I don't blame you. 
And it was great, I, I, Jimmy. It was great. Go on, Booty. I flinched when you made tackles. Some of the tackles you, you made. Uh, but they were, oh, yeah. But they were but fair. Was, they were fair, but they were tough. Yeah, but it was... It was, it was yeah, it was part and parcel of the game, and that's the way we was. And to be honest with you, that's what Neil installed into me into the side to get the best out of us to push us to, to push us to where we had to be and we've obviously started a legacy to that's moved on to where it is now you know and and, and that was it and and like i'm just honored and, pri and privileged and proud to be to pull the what black with blue and white shirt on and to be still part of it and that's it that's it for me you know I, I, like i said to you earlier as soon as i left and gone to swim then it became a job in the and then a job i didn't like that was it Chris, did you ever have any uh, superstitions before before a game or a few pints? <laughs> he says quietly. A few points, but I, I, I'd, always, I'd always have to walk out last. If I wasn't <laughs> captain, I'd always walk out last and I'd always put my left, um, left boot on last as well. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I've never tried that. I might try that one. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> Praise at the end of the day, you just keep scoring goals and you'll be fine. <laughs> that's that's it, mate. And at the end of the day, like I said, I, I like like Andy said, and Andy, I know this, the fact is, is I we would have played for nothing. He's an own uh, own grown lad, and he's Mister Oldersfield Town as it is, and obviously yourselves and whatever's come. But I, we would have played for nothing. I would have played for nothing, and it's when you get that installed that into the side, where if where is. If you're buying into the, what your manager's doing, if everybody can buy into that, you won't go far wrong. You know, it's when you have that little no disrespect. I don't know what things goes on in dressing rooms now. It's what they used to be, but you have that bad apple, and that bad apple will then generate through everything. You know what I mean? And if everybody's buying into what the manager and your players are trying to do, you won't go far wrong. Uh, Bully, just just finally, because we're going to have to to wrap up because it's going to yeah, be yeah. I know we're well, going to be in two minutes. Oh, oh, that's the end of me now. <laughs> me and Boover is going to have a fight. Colossal for Huddersfield Town, Barnsley. Barnsley Boxing Day, obviously. Um, how much do you are you looking forward to this game? A bit of a Yorkshire derby. Oh, mate, they used to be brilliant, didn't they? They used to absolutely be brilliant. I used to love playing against what was it that um, Redfern and all them sort of people, and I used to love it and. The the more the more the rain, the more the boggy of the pitch, you know. I should, I was like a pig in the thing. I should love it. You know, and things like that. And it was it was it, it not when they plays on these carpets now, you know. So but I think at the end of the day they they they're, they're a decent side barns. I've watched them a few times this year and I watched them towards the end of last season and and they're not a bad side, but I think if town can get into a moody doors then they they might come away with a decent result there. Yeah, fingers crossed we do. Uh, Bully, Boothy, Fraser, thank you very much for joining Have us. Have a great Christmas, everybody. And hopefully it's a better New Year for everybody concerned. Fingers crossed. Thank you very much for watching. Boothy, I'll see you soon. <laughs> all right then, Bully. <laughs> all right, Fraser, have a good one. Have a nice Christmas all, all right? See you soon, boys. See all you. the best, Fraser. All the best. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Bye.